Hey guys, how's it going? Buster Photo here, and today I'm going to show you how to partially disassemble your Fujika GW690 and also how to adjust your rangefinder. Now, it's pretty straightforward, it's incredibly easy. There is one way you can totally mess up, and good, good thing for you is I've already made that mistake so that you don't have to. That's why I made this video because I can't seem to find this video anywhere on the internet, so here we are, lucky you. Okay, so if you're just looking to adjust your rangefinder, you need to remove the, the cold shoe right here. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna show you how to remove the cold shoe, but I'm also gonna show you how to remove the top of uh, the camera. Reason for that being is it's easier to show you how to adjust the rangefinder with this completely off than just this right here. Also, it's helpful if you want to clean the inside of your camera. So let's get right into it. Let's zoom in. Where, uh, let's do right there. Okay, so right here on the top, next to the cold shoe, you have two uh, Phillips heads screws, two tiny screws. You just simply unscrew those. I like to leave them in there just to keep everything organized because you do not want to drop one of these screws. They are teeny tiny. So two Phillips and then one, one flat head. You know, just make sure your, your screwdriver is seated properly. You don't want to strip or damage uh, anything on this camera. So once you do that, this should just come right off. Now, sometimes just this metal part comes off, but what you want to do is, oh, see, look. Oof, that little screw popped out. You do not want it to fall inside of the camera. So you just pull off this plastic piece, set it to the side. And right here, you have your, adjust, your adjustment screws to adjust your rangefinder. Now I'm gonna remove the top plate because it's really hard to see inside. So if you don't wanna wait for that, all you need to do is right here in this bigger hole, there's a Phillips head screw. That screw adjusts, adjusts, adjusts your horizontal calibration. So your horizontal calibration. The tiny fill, uh, flathead screw, which um, I mean, it's impossible to see, it's right there. That screw adjusts your, your vertical adjustment. But because I wanna properly show you that, along with how to remove this top plate, I'm just gonna keep going so you can see the inside of the camera. Now, to remove the top plate of this camera, first you must remove this little dial right here. So what I usually do is I hold the shutter advanced lever down and usually with a little piece of rubber, oh man, let's see. Usually with some fabric or something, I wish I had a jar, a jar opener. I mean, you can apply pressure here, it's fine. But what you wanna do is kinda, I think we got it. Just something to get a little bit of grip. Yeah, there we go. And once you see it starts turning, and I'll show you how to do this step by step so you don't lose any parts. So once you get that going, again, hold down the advanced lever. It really, it's just like screwing the top off a jar. You're gonna keep going, keep going. And eventually it just comes right up. Here's the inner part of the, the shutter. This won't fall out, so I usually just set that down flat. Next part, there's a little washer. Again, you can be, you want to be careful, but everything here is pretty sturdy, so you can just start taking things up. Once that's out, the film advanced lever comes right up. Put that to the side, and then you're left with this little, little metal piece that just literally comes right up. Easy peasy. Now, so now that you've done that, you're ready to remove your four screws so the top plate, top plate can come right up. Now there's four. There's one right here. 
this tiny Phillips head. Now make sure you have, if you're doing this, you have some good tiny screwdrivers. You don't want to use some that are not the right size because you do not want to strip these screws because, oh boy, I don't even know how would you find that. You would find these screws. So that's one off. The second one is right here on the side next to the neck strap lugs. Remove that. Boom, one. Now this is very important. There's a small, I'm sorry, there's a, the longest of these four screws is below the, the six nine. So just make sure when you put this back together, the, the, the longest one is gonna go on the front of the camera. Again, pretty easy. Make sure you have a good screwdriver, which these aren't. These are really cheap Harbor Freight screwdrivers, but they're the perfect sizes um, for these screws. So once you remove that, see that one's a little bit longer than the other ones. Actually, pretty, pretty much, pretty, pretty by a pretty good amount it's longer. And your last screw is right here. And then once you remove that, it's literally just pulling up this hot plate. There's nothing else holding it. There's no electronics holding it down, uh, at least not with this, this version of the GW690. So once you do that, you literally just kind of jimmy it. The only place where it gets kind of snug is right here in the front of the camera. But if you're ever so careful, it literally just comes up. Now you can take this opportunity to clean the inside of your viewfinder window because sometimes dust does collect there. As you can see, I already got a fingerprint on mine. I like to clean that, you know, wherever you can, wherever you feel comfortable, but okay. So that is off. So now you have the top part of your camera. Now, this is where, you know, you wanna be very careful for one reason in particular, and that's, let's see if I can get any closer. There is one tiny spring right there. Now that, what that spring does, you'll see this move. What that spring does is it helps your parallax correction return. You see how it comes up as I move the shutter? I mean the focus dial. I knocked out that little spring and it took me forever <laughs> to figure out how to put it back properly. Thankfully, with some patience, I put it back together. But the reason I bring this up is when you're taking this apart, you do not want to touch near where that tiny little tension spring is. Because if that thing goes bling, luckily it came off and it landed right on the table. But you'll be in pretty big trouble if you lose that thing. The camera will still be usable, but you'll have no parallax correction. It won't work properly, but everything else, unfortunately, will work. Now, I want to remove this top plate so you can see the adjustment screws for the rangefinder. Now this is where it gets a little hairy because these screws, they're two Phillips head screws, they're tiny, but you do not want these to fall into the camera. So when you remove them, I mean, make sure you have a good grip on them and swing them out. There's one, because I mean, that screw falls anywhere in here, you'll, oh boy, you're gonna, you're gonna be in a world of hurt to try to get it back. Now again, you don't need to remove any of this to adjust the range finder. You can do it through these holes, but for the sake of this video, I want you guys to be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So you remove the two screws. This little top plate comes right off, put it to the side, keep everything organized. And now we can see the two adjustment screws that I was talking about. Now they're kind of hard to see Okay, so right there, this Phillips head right here, this one, not this like flat head right here, this cross screw right here, that's a screw that through that top plate that I removed, you go in and you adjust, and that'll adjust your horizontal adjustments. And then, oh boy, right there behind this mirror, is a little tiny flathead screw. That is how you adjust your vertical alignment 
of your rangefinder. And that is pretty much it. Um, I'm going to put this back together just in case you got this far. You don't remember what you did. Um, but yeah, you can. You don't need to disassemble all this. You can just do that by removing the, the cold shoe. But I just wanted to show everything. Is. And the one benefit of doing this is that you can dust this off. You can dust the front off. You can get your camera nice and clean. You know, throw a little bit of air in here. But as long as you remember to be careful with that tiny little tension spring. That thing pops off, you lose it. Oh God, good luck trying to find it. All right, reassembly. So we put our top plate back on. Now this again is a hairy part. Make sure, I would almost certainly recommend you have magnetic tip screwdriver just so you don't lose anything. These unfortunately are not. So we're kind of playing with fire here. All right, we're putting the first screw back on. This second screw is a tricky one because if that falls into the camera, oh boy, you're in a world of hurt trying to find it. Okay, now as careful as we can, we're gonna, boom, one shot, baby. How you like me now? Boom. All right, and that's already put together, good to go. Now your top plate, you literally just squish it down. Remember I mentioned right here is where it's snug. So usually if you can try to do that first. Oh, it looks like we got it on there. You want to check your holes for alignment. Holes aligned, holes aligned. All the holes are aligned so you can continue your reassembly. Put back your four. Phillips head screws. Start with that one. One, remember that the longer one of your four screws goes in the front of the camera. That's your long one. If you're at this point in reassembly, you're pretty much, I mean, you can drop all these screws and nothing will happen as long as you're working above a nice flat surface. Make sure to not over tighten. You don't want to strip these screws just in case, you know, you have to disassemble something again. Or, you know, if you want to sell this lens to some, this camera to somebody, you don't want to mess things up for the future, for the future guys. There's that one back in. Perfect. Number four. That one's back in there. Okay. Now to, re to reassemble this, it's pretty pretty simple. It's really hard to mess up. Let me focus on that. Okay. First piece that goes in is this one. This literally, there's no wrong way to put it. There's a little groove and like a little, this thing has like a little tooth. You just slide that tooth into that little groove. You put your, your advanced lever back on. Boom, simple. Your little washer, boom. And then this this piece literally just screws in like like the top of like like a tomato sauce or, or like any jar. Again, hold the film advance lever down. Sometimes it doesn't go in perfectly aligned. So just back it off a little bit. It happened again. Just kind of slowly find the groove, boom. It should it should roll right, right on really smoothly. If it's if you're fighting it for any reason, it's misaligned and it's not going out properly. We're just gonna finger tighten it for the sake of this video. That's already good to go. And then you just put back your cold shoe. Boom. Remember it's two Phillips heads and one flat head. There's one, here's two, oops. There's two, and your flat head. Tighten that down, make sure not over tighten. You're not, this isn't a car, nothing's really vibrating. You know, so, and then that's pretty much it. 
That's how you adjust the range finder on the Fujika GW690 and also how to disassemble it. I'm glad this video finally exists on the internet because I was desperate to find a video that covered this and of course there's none. There's one video but it's totally in Japanese and I'm pretty sure he's kind of figuring, figuring it out as he goes. So here is now the video of how to do this, saving you guys lots of headaches. So please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for stopping by. See ya.